guys, this is such a fun problem. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. There's an infinite number of X's and it wants us to solve for X. It says five is equal to the square root of the quantity X plus the square root of the quantity two X plus the square root of the quantity X plus the square root of quantity two X. And this goes on forever. I think this is cool for two reasons. Solving for X is gonna be fun, but then verifying is gonna be even more fun. If you wanna try it on your own, pause it right now, cause I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. For the first step, let's see if we can get rid of the infinite square roots. Let's group this set of the infinite square roots. And what's funny is this stuff inside of the parentheses is literally the same thing as this stuff up here. It's the square root of this pattern going on forever. And so is this one, the square root of this pattern going on forever. And then as we showed earlier, this pattern going on forever is equal to five. So in the place of this square root of this infinite pattern, let's plug in five. Let's smush everything together. So now we got rid of the infinite pattern and we can solve for x. In order to get rid of this square root, let's square both sides of the equation. On the left hand side, 5 squared is 25. And on the right hand side, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. So now we have 25 equals x plus the square root of 2x plus 5. Let's get this square root alone on one side. Let's subtract x from both sides. On the left hand side, we have 25 minus x. And on the right hand side, we have the square root all by itself. And now to get rid of this square root, let's square both sides. On the left hand side, the quantity 25 minus x squared is 25 minus x times 25 minus x. And after you multiply this out, you get 625 minus 50x plus x squared. And then on the right hand side, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And now we have a quadratic. Let's set the whole thing equal to zero. Let's subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 5 from both sides. 625 minus 5 is 620. Negative 50x minus 2x is negative 52 2x and we can bring down the x squared. And then on the right hand side, all this stuff will cancel out leaving us with zero. So now let's rearrange this in descending order and let's solve it with the quadratic formula. It'll be x equals negative negative 52, which is 52, plus or minus the square root of the quantity negative 52 squared minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is 620. And the whole thing will be divided by two a, which is two times one. And we can simplify that to x equals 52 plus or minus square root of the quantity negative 52 squared is equal to 2,704. And then we're gonna subtract four times one times 620 to give us 2,480. And the whole thing will be divided by two. And then 2,704 minus 2,480 is 224. This 224 can be split up into 16 times 14. And since they're both inside of the square root, they can each get their own square roots. And the square root of 16 is equal to four. Let's smush everything together. Everything is being divided by two, or another way to think of it, each of them is being divided by two. 52 divided by two is 26 and four root 14 divided by two is two root 14. So now we have X is equal to 26 plus or minus two root 14. And since we have a plus minus, there are two answers for X. We have the plus version and the minus version. And these are the possible values for X. Let's test them out. I'm not sure how to plug this into the equation with the infinite X's. So let's go back to this point where there was no longer an infinite number of X's. I think this is a valid check because five is equal to the square root of the sum containing the infinite X's. So if this checks out, I think the whole thing would check out. Let me know in the comments if there's a break in that logic. I really do hope somebody knows a way to plug it into the infinite X's. But for now, this should be good enough. And to verify this, we're literally going to show this side is equal to 5. And this is the cool thing I was talking about earlier. This is going to be kind of tricky to explain, but we'll go through it carefully. Here's the first step. All we did was multiply 2 times 26 minus 2 root 14. And everything else is the same. And then we can combine like terms. The 52 plus 5 is 57. So now for the next step, we want to get rid of this square root so we can combine like terms. And in order to get rid of the square root, we need to make this a perfect square. Let's see if we can make it some quantity ax minus b squared. So if we can change this into this, the square and the square root will cancel each other out. First, let's multiply this out. The quantity ax minus b squared gives us a squared x squared minus 2abx plus b squared. So for this, we have three things we need to find, x, a, and b. We're going to make this negative 4 root 14 the same thing as the negative 2abx. So let's make this square root of 14 
14 the x. And that means x squared would equal 14. And since this first term contains an x squared, we need this first term to contain a 14. Let's make this 57 a 56 plus one. So basically we just pulled one from here and moved it over here. Now 56 is four times 14. So this 14 is the x squared. And now we can solve for a. This four is the a squared, which means a could equal two. And then the b is gonna be really easy to solve for because this b squared needs to equal this one. And let's keep things positive and call b one. And then we can verify this with the middle term. Does negative two abx equal negative four root 14? We can plug in two for the a, one for the b, and root 14 for the x. And we end up with negative four root 14 equals negative four root 14. So everything checks out. So now we have the three things we wanted, x, a, and b. That means we can rewrite the inside of this square root. For the a, we're gonna plug in two. For the x, we're gonna plug in root 14. And then we're gonna subtract b, which is equal to one. So we were able to take this inside the square root and make it a perfect square. I think that's pretty cool. And now this square root and this square can cancel each other out. And we get to combine like terms. This negative two root 14 plus two root 14 will become zero. They're gonna cancel each other out. 26 minus one is 25, and the square root of 25 is five. We were able to simplify all this down to five. This lower solution checks out. And now let's check out the first scenario, the one with the plus. I think this is going to look a lot like the other one, so I'll probably go a little bit faster. Here's the first step. All we did was distribute the two to both of these terms. And then we can combine like terms 52 plus five is 57. And then once again, we want to get rid of this square root so we can combine all the like terms. In order to do that, we want to change this into a perfect square. Let's see if we can find something of the form ax plus b whole quantity squared. Next, let's multiply this out. This becomes a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared. So we got to figure out what is x, a, and b for 57 plus 4 root 14. Let's make the 4 root 14 the same thing as 2abx. And let's make the x equal to root 14. And that means that x squared would equal 14. Now since x squared is equal to 14 and we have an x squared in the first term, let's see if we can get this in terms of 14. Let's change this 57 into a 56 plus one. And then 56 can be expressed as four times 14. Where this blue 14 is the same thing as this blue x squared, and the green four is the same thing as the green a squared. So a could be positive or negative two, let's try positive two. And then b squared is equal to one, so let's let b equal one. We can verify the a and b with this middle term real quick. Does two abx equal four root 14? In the place of the a, let's Let's plug in 2. In the place of the b, let's plug in 1. In the place of the x, let's plug in root 14. And it does check out. This is 4 root 14 equals 4 root 14. And now we have x, a, and b. So we're ready to rewrite this as a perfect square. In the place of the a, we'll plug in 2. In the place of the x, we'll plug in root 14. And then we're going to add to that b, which is equal to 1. Now from here, the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And now we're ready to combine like terms. 2 root 14 plus 2 root 14 is 4 root 14. And 26 plus 1 is 27. This is not true. The square root of 27 plus 4 root 14 is definitely not 5. It's got to be greater than 5. So the solution of x equals 26 plus 2 root 14 does not work. It was an extraneous solution. I also want to show you this really quick. As we plug this in for x and show more and more of the x's in the sum, it approaches 5. This is asymptotic towards 5. As a sum including a finite number of x's, it will never hit 5. But as a sum with an infinite number of these x's, it will equal exactly 5. How exciting.